So the first idea that we need to introduce within this model is the idea of aggregate demand. So we know that the demand curve in our regular old supply and demand model showed us the total amount of a product that people would buy at any price. Well, in a similar way, our aggregate demand or our total demand shows us the total amount of goods and services that either households, firms, the government, or customers abroad want to buy at every single price level. So our aggregate demand curve will look very similar to our regular old demand curve. It's downward sloping. It just represents the total amount of stuff that people want to buy at every single price level. And so what we see is that our law of demand is still in play here. The idea that as price levels are high, the total amount of goods and services demanded in the economy is low. And whenever the price level is low, the total amount of goods and services demanded in the economy is high. Now, why is that? Well, suppose that you have $100, right? When you have $100, what we end up seeing is that when prices rise, your $100 doesn't buy you as many things anymore. In the same way that if you have $100 but everything gets cheaper, it now buys you more, right? And so, of course, we can see that whenever the price level would rise, the total demand would go down because your money doesn't go as far as it once did. But whenever prices drop, what we end up seeing is that your money now goes further. You can buy more things. So the total amount demanded would increase. And that's just because there was a change in our price level. Now, a couple other things I want to talk about as we uh, jump into this a little bit further. One thing you might see is that uh, I'm going to start using the variable Y, so capital Y, as our real GDP. Or you also might hear me call it our output. Just so you know, um, Y, real GDP, and output all can be used interchangeably. But I want to use this as we think back to our real GDP formula. If you remember, back from unit 4, it was that Y equals C plus I plus G plus X sub N, or real GDP is equal to consumer spending, plus investment spending, plus government spending, plus net exports. So let's suppose we're hanging out at this point right here, at this price level and at this output. Um, so that's the total amount of goods and services demanded at that price level. But again, we talked about this idea that the law of demand is still in play. So if those prices were to drop, what we end up seeing is that the total output that we would demand would increase. We move down along our aggregate demand curve because as stuff gets cheaper, we're able to purchase more of it. Now, there's a couple different competing theories on why we see this movement along. And it's not that one is better or different than the other. It's just that they're all part of the equation. They all play in in some way. Now, I'm not going to ask you to uh, write these on a test or anything like that, but I want to make sure you're very familiar with these ideas. So the first idea is just this idea that the reason that our, our real GDP increases whenever prices decrease is because of what we call the wealth effect. And so the wealth effect is just the thought that Again, say you have that $100 and uh, you go out and you buy the same things that you normally buy with that $100. But however, now that prices are cheaper, once you buy everything, you got some money left over. And so now that you have that money left over, what are you going to do with it? Well, you're going to buy more stuff. And so again, as that price goes down, your money now goes further. You can do more with that money or you will demand more with your money. And that's not just true for you. That's true for everybody across our economy. And that's why our total output demanded is going to increase when prices drop. Another one is the idea of the interest rate effect. And this is saying, you know, instead of you maybe spending that extra money that you have, you save that extra money. So you go out and buy all those same things as normal. But since everything's cheaper, you don't use all your money. But rather than buying more stuff, you go and save your money. Now, whenever you save your money, what we end up seeing is that as that money goes into a bank, banks now have more money to loan out. We talked about this last unit, right? As they have more money to loan out, interest rates are going to go down, which is going to increase investment. And if we're if it's increasing investment, that's increasing our real GDP because investment is part of our GDP equation. And so that's what it just means as those price levels drop and you save some of that extra money, what we're going to end up seeing is that that's going to drive interest rates down, which increases investment, which increases real GDP. And the last one is the exchange rate effect. And this is just the idea that say that prices get cheaper in our economy. What we end up seeing is that our net exports is going to increase because everyone from overseas notices that, hey, goods in the U.S. are now cheaper. I want to buy more of those. And as they want to buy more, that's going to increase our exports. Not only that, it's also going to decrease our imports uh, because now that stuff's cheaper in America, people might start buying stuff in the U.S. instead of buying it from overseas. But remember, all of these things are just causing, uh, a, these are caused by a change in the price level, which is moving along the curve. We haven't seen the entire curve shift yet.
Because remember, we have to have something outside of a change in price cause a shift of the entire curve. So what does cause the shift of the entire aggregate demand curve? Well, the nice thing is you actually already know these. So what is going to cause a shift of the entire curve? Again, let's say we're hanging out at this point like we were before. What's going to cause it? We're at that same price level. Now, all of a sudden, People are demanding a higher output worth of stuff. People want to buy more stuff. Prices have not changed. Now, all of a sudden, people just want more of it, right? There's a higher total demand. Well, if we think back to our equation, y equals c plus i plus g plus x sub n, if you notice, our real GDP is that y. So on the left hand of the equation, we have our y. On our right hand, we have c, i, g, and x sub n. If we want our y to increase, what else has to increase? Well, if you look at it, it's just like, well, any of those four things on the right-hand side of the equation. So any change or any maybe increase in consumer spending, increase in investment, increase in government spending, or increase in net exports, those would all cause our entire curve to shift. Now, what we're saying is that one of those things is happening. However, it's not because prices have changed. Maybe consumers just, they have more money. They have more disposable income. Prices haven't changed. Now they're just buying more stuff, right? Or maybe uh, the government sets a higher budget. And because they set a higher budget for this year, there's going to be an increase in government spending. Again, prices didn't change. It's just now at those same price levels, there's more of everything being demanded within our economy.